the title of the message, A Faithful Man Who Can Find. A Faithful Man Who Can Find. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. Proverbs 20, verse 6, the Bible says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Brother Nathan, can you pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Like the Bible says, but a faithful man who can find. We live in a day of, day of age where people are unfaithful. You know, like Brother Nathan mentioned, families are broken because of unfaithful people. You know, churches are split because of unfaithful people. Everywhere look around, you know, the world is a mess because people are unfaithful. They're unfaithful to their country. They're unfaithful to their you know, institution. They're unfaithful to every little thing. You know, what characterized people from the past is that they had a characteristic of something called, you know, faithfulness, right? Whether they were saved or not, they were faithful. You know, if you were to ask a young child or young man and woman from the days of 1950s, you know, even the 70s, you know, maybe not 70, 80, there are too many hippies there, but, you know, maybe, you know, a little back then, right? When you ask them about certain things, they always said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. They had that character. If their brother was fighting, their sister were fighting, not that you guys should do and try to test your sister and brother's faithfulness, you know, they'll come and back you up. They'll fight together, right? But nowadays, you know, people don't have any backbones, Amen. especially Bible believers. You call yourself Bible believer, but there's no courage. There's no boldness. You, know, you seem to be just like everyone else. I mean, you as a Bible believer should be the most faithful one. Amen. You actually know the truth. You have the King James Bible, Amen. and you are saved, and you have no doubt where you're going after you die. Thank you, Lord. And that is the greatest blessing. Amen. But your life is full of unfaithful events. When you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he came into your heart. And you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, right? And you're going to participate in the marriage, right, mm -hmm. in the future. Spiritually speaking, you know, you're tied and bound to Lord Jesus Christ in a marriage. There are a few married couples here, right? How would you feel on a daily basis if your spouse cheated on you, right? How would you feel? You both said, till death do us part. And you both said, we're going to be faithful to each other. As in, we're not going to be looking at other people. We're just going to be looking at you. We'll be unchanging when it comes to our love for you. That's what you declare, right? When you're at the, pulp, I mean, the podium or anywhere you were, outside, inside. However, many days go by and you start losing that faithfulness, right? It's not about, you know, 
just saying to your spouses, like, you know, I don't love you anymore, you know? I mean, some people actually say that, you know, they, they need to really get punished for that, but they do it differently, right? They don't love him like they used to, or they have, like, wandering eyes, they call it. As a Christian, you have wandering eyes, too. A lot. A lot of you. You don't look at Jesus Christ. If you don't look at Jesus Christ, then, like, I'm looking at the camera to the audience, and if I'm looking at, like, here, you know, I'm just wondering from the camera, from the view. Imagine you and your spouse are having a dinner at a restaurant. And every time you want to have a conversation, you're trying to talk to each other, and your spouse is looking at someone else. They're like, oh, how was your day? You know, how was this meal? They, they don't even care. They just look at someone else. And as a person experiencing that from the other end, how would you feel? Say if I'm talking to Brother Dave, right? But he's looking at that way. Yeah. And he's talking to me. And I just turn around, and you know, I start staring at someone else. You feel like, man, this, this person got no respect for me. You know, we need to go outside and you know, resolve it or something. <laughs> but, however, if it's your wife, if it's your husband, how would you feel? Because many people here and many people listening, you know, you're married. And part of the reason you are unfaithful to your spouse in many occasions is because you're not faithful to Lord Jesus Christ. There's no foundation in your life. If you're not faithful to Lord Jesus Christ, how do you think you got to be faithful to your spouses? How do you think you got to be faithful to your family? How are you going to be faithful to your children? How? You can't. Because your flesh is too strong, devil so strong, and the world is too strong. We say, great is thy faithfulness. Lord was faithful enough. He had the perfect faithfulness where he died for us no matter what the circumstances were, situations were. Because Jesus Christ was faithful to us, we need to be faithful to him. We are always backwards. You're like, you know what? I need to be faithful to this family, friend, you know, everything else, right? But you always lose that number one thing. You need to be faithful to Lord Jesus Christ. If you are unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ, how do you think you're going to live your life? You have an old man and a new man. And you, after you get saved, you have a new man. But if you are continuously pleasing the old man with your sinful ways, then you're cheating on the new man. Do you want to be labeled as a cheater? Man, I don't care if you're saved or unsaved. I think one of the worst terms that a human being could be called upon is a cheater. Yeah. What does cheater mean? Unfaithful person. Right? And when you know that someone is unfaithful, then what does that equate to? It equates to, you know, not trustworthy, deceiving, right? liar. And nobody wants to be called a liar here, right? Uh, you're a liar. Like, I point at you and suddenly, like, you, you're a liar. You're like, oh, why would he call me that? You know, I don't feel good, right? <laughs> what if your spouse suddenly, you know, turned around right next to you, pointed at your face and said, you're a liar. You've been unfaithful. Wow, it's going to get real quiet. I'm pretty sure a lot of, one, a lot of people want to just leave the place. However, though, 
You've been so unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ that you don't even know it anymore. And every time you serve something other than Lord Jesus Christ, it's all idolatry, and you're committing, you know, unfaithfulness. I guarantee you, if married people were put in a situation and if they took action that would cause, you know, infidelity or unfaithfulness, they're going to think real hard about it. And hopefully most people will stop because they know how much damage it's going to cause to their marriage, how much, right, it's going to hurt the other person. But do you ever think like that about Lord Jesus Christ? When you're committing that sin, when you are at a place you shouldn't be, when you're listening to something you shouldn't, and when you're watching something that you shouldn't, when you're talking in a way that you shouldn't, you are committing infidelity. You're like, wow, that's such a hard term, right? I mean... You need to hear hard terms to change because you are so, how should I say, it's like a concrete, right? You pour that cement and then it gets hardened very quickly. In order for you to really, really get right with the Lord, in order to you to be really faithful, when you know that the actions that you're taking before it gets so hardened, you got to take your foot out. Imagine you have your foot on the ground, and then someone unknowingly pours the cement. You have a short amount of time to take your feet out so that, you know, you don't be stuck in there. But for some of you, or for many of you, your feet is stuck on the ground. Your feet is stuck with that sin. Your feet we are stuck with that devil, the Satan, you name it. Sometimes willingly, sometimes unknowingly. Maybe this is where, you know, the sin is. Because you're not right with the Lord. You're not on your knees praying like you should, right? And you're not being faithful. And then you see that blinking light and it's so tempting and you want to go closer and closer to it, and you get closer and closer, and then your feet is under that, in that, on that cement, and devil's pouring it. And devil's goal is to make it harden as soon as possible. But there's a certain amount of time it's going to take. And, but you know what? You don't stop. You continue to go try to grab that light, that wickedness, that sin. And you go further and further away from the Lord, and you can't come back anymore. And in order to come back, the whole ground needs to be broken. And you can't do it with your hands, right? Can you break the cement with your hands? No. You're going to need tool, and it's going to take time. As you are unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ, as time passes by, it gets harder and harder to come back to the Lord. Much, much harder. But in your regular life, think about it. Going back to the you know, examples of you know, married people, do you feel good when you hurt your spouse's feeling? Right? Or even expected people who's about to get married. Do you feel good you know, when you hurt your future spouse's feelings? Right? Does it feel good when you break their heart? I don't know about you. I mean, I think that's just devastating. That's part of the emotion that you don't really want to go through. But, you know, many of the couples go through because, you know, you and I, were not perfect. But it shouldn't happen often. It shouldn't be happening at all in the first place. But why does it happen so often? Because you are not faithful. And don't kid around, right? I'm a faithful person. People who say I'm a faithful person, you're the last person who's faithful. Right away, you're going to fall. You know, many times people who say I'm not 
proud, right? And you're the most proud person, right? People say, you know, I'm humble, right? You know, there are people say, I'm humble in front of people, okay? We see a lot of politicians say it, right? And then what happens? You know, they're the scumbags of the earth, right? They're like the worst people out there. So don't say, I'm faithful, right? You got to work to be faithful, you know? Because one thing that you and I have to realize is that at any moment, we could fall. At any moment, we could be unfaithful. At any moment, we could deny Jesus Christ. Think about Apostle Peter. You think you have better faith than him? You think you have stronger faith than Apostle Paul had? But what did he do? He denied Jesus Christ three times. If it could happen to him, it could definitely happen to you or it has happened to you already. It's something that you and I have to really consider deeply each day. I mean, when, when was the last time you really thought about it? I Man, am I being faithful to Lord Jesus Christ? Probably you haven't thought about it for the longest time. That's why you're hearing this message, right? It doesn't happen for no reason. There are no coincidences, right? You know, I mean, I'm preaching to myself as well. I mean, when was the last time I was really thinking about each day's action, each, you know, words that I speak, you know, each places that I go and see and listen to? Did I think about, man, am I being a faithful Christian? Am I being a faithful person to Lord Jesus Christ? That's why you're where you are. That's why there's no amen, no shout. That's why there's no joy in your life. That's why all you have is complaints. That's why, you know, you, you don't really want to talk to any brethren, especially those brethren, you know, who's really closer to the Lord. You know, isn't that funny? Unfaithful, unfaithful people don't want to hang around with faithful people. Man, that's, I mean, that's just true. Right? Yeah. Uh, we know who you are by who you hang around with. I mean, it's not even what the Bible says. It's what everybody else says. I mean, worldly people know. If you hang around with rappers, okay, we know you like rap, right? Right? If you hang around with, you know, German shepherd lovers, okay, we know you like German shepherd, right? If you like Disneyland, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to Disneyland club, right? So you will be with people, but however, you're not going to be with people who's not the same as you. I mean, opposite, right? What's opposite of Disneyland? I don't know what, Universal Studios? I mean, maybe you don't want to be with like, people who's at Universal Studios or something. Or opposite of German Shepherd. What's opposite of German Shepherd? A Chihuahua, right? Maybe you don't want to be with Chiao or other small dogs, right? But when it comes to spiritual and serious stuff, why is it that when there's a faithful man doing the work in the ministry, you don't want to be part of it? There's a serious issue with your heart. There's a serious issue with your faithfulness, right? If someone's out there preaching the gospel, if someone's out there passing out track, if someone's out there doing the work in the ministry, and you don't want to be with them because why? Because why? Because you're unfaithful. You don't want that sin to be shown to other people. Right? The reason you don't converse with, say, I don't know, whoever, whoever it is, say, you know, say, Mrs. Kim, you know, for instance, or whatnot. It's because you feel like, you know, my sin will be revealed, right? Our little kids know that, right? Especially little babies, right? They know when they see Mrs. Kim, just ask Nathan, right? Okay. I don't want to go there because I know something's going to be revealed. <laughs> However, certain kids, right, you know, like Pastor Gina when he was young, right, 
he had no reservation. He just went. He did what he needed to because he had nothing to hide, and he was faithful to his mother. I mean, being faithful shouldn't be that hard. I know it is because, you know, we live with the flesh, you know, with the old man. But however, if your goal is to please that person, it doesn't become that hard. Think about it. Love birds out there, right? Does time go by slow when you're with that person that you love? Or does the time go by fast when you're with that person, right? If it's slow right now, even before you got married, I don't know, okay? <laughs> it's time to check something. But for majority, time seems to go so fast. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're in love, and I'm like, man, I want to spend more time together. You know, and you get married, and it should stay the same, right? If you're faithful. However, with Lord Jesus Christ, it's different. You should be wanting to spend more time with Him every day. Amen. You should want to love Him more every day. Amen. You want to please Him every day. I think that's the thing that a lot of people forget. We take Lord Jesus Christ for granted. We take his faithfulness for granted. We don't really think about what he thinks. It's like, you know, same old saying, it's my way or the highway. And then you're telling that to Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe, who God himself, who died for your sins. Like, Lord, hold on a second. Lord, look the other way. Lord, I won't be home today. You know, when you don't spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ, think of it like this, right? You know, like in some cultures, like men out there after work, drink and spend a lot of time and come home late, right? What do you think wives do? You think wives just, you know, lollygag and, you know, play with their thumbs? No, they wait. They wait and wait, right? Wait and wait until the husband comes, or vice versa if, you know, woman's out there working. And then they feel safe and they feel relieved when they finally see your face, right? When it comes to Lord Jesus Christ, right? Lord's always there, you know? Isn't that amazing? He's, he's unchanging. He's always faithful. He's always there. I mean, he's just there. But when was the last time you made him not wait? Right? I mean, in, in our Christian life, we always make him wait. Right? How would you feel? Your spouse says, I'll be home at 10, 10 p.m. And you're not home. It's 11, 11 p.m. You're not home. 12 a.m. You're not home. One, two, three. And you don't show up until next day. How do you think your spouses will feel? I mean, they're going to start asking questions if it happens over and over and over, right? And eventually, that marriage is not going to last. It's going to break off, right? Who wants to be with a person who says they love you but never be with you yeah. and always lie. I mean, do you want to be with someone? I mean, it doesn't matter whether they're pretty, rich, handsome, or whatnot. If they're always lying to you, why would you want to be with them? If they never show their love to you, why would you want to be with them? If they're always looking at another person, why would you want to be with them? You despise those people, but you don't realize you're that people. You're that person who's looking at other person all the time. You're the person who never keeps promise. You're the person who lies. How many times have you committed to the Lord? Lord, I'm going to spend, you know, every day around this time, every day I wake up, every day before I go to sleep. You know, Lord, I'm going to always spend time with you, you know, as much as I can whenever opportunity arises. But you don't. You break that promise over and over and over. You as a person 
who doesn't want other person to break promise to you, then why are you doing it? That's why for many people, whether you're in a Bible-believing church or not, because you're unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ, there's a good chance that you're going to be unfaithful to your spouses. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm better than that. No, you're not. You can't commit any sin that unsaved person can commit. Just remember that. If you're not careful, if you're not faithful to the Lord, you can do the same thing the other person does. You can kill, you can steal, and you can commit all those, you know, lustful sins without any problem. Because that's how wicked you are. But thank God. Because the Lord said, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a solution, right? Because the Lord is faithful. If you get right with the Lord, you confess your sins, and you truly repent, right? Where it's not just the words, right? It's from your heart. Then Lord's going to forgive you, and you can start over. Man, that's a great blessing, man. Man, hey, can you ask that to like Buddha, you know, like Allah, anybody else? No. But Lord Jesus Christ, man, what a Savior we serve. What a Lord and Savior where we can actually go and say, Lord, I'm so sorry for being an unfaithful person. You know, Lord, please forgive me. You know, I always want to be straight, I mean, true to you, stay faithful to you, you know, convict me because I want to be a faithful person. Then when you're faithful to Lord Jesus Christ, it has a trickle-down effect. Amen. you got to be faithful to your spouse. Right? When you look unto Lord Jesus Christ, and you know what's going to please Him. Right? And what's going to please Him is being faithful to your spouse. And what's going to please Him? Being faithful to your family. Right? And what's going to please Him? Being faithful to your church. Being faithful to your pastors. You know, pastors, wives, and being faithful to each other, right? There's so many people who doesn't want to be a Christian because they've seen so many unfaithful things going on in a Christian church, so-called, right? Whether it's business, right? People come to church to do business in a lot of places. The first thing they do is they pass out their you know, business card. Hey, hey, I'm from here, I'm from here. They don't talk about salvation. They don't talk about Bible. They don't talk about anything about God. They say, okay, you know, I'm from company A. Here, here, here. You know, if you need any service, here, here, right? Or, and the, or some people come just looking for different, you know, opposite sex, right? Oh, man, who can I marry, right? You know, you know church goers are supposed to be nice, right, and faithful, right? Oh, yeah, they think just like you, right, you know? I mean, you're, you're going to be unfaithful, they're going to be unfaithful, and then, you know, voila, you know, see you at the court, right? It's very, very important that you, you tell yourself and you check your heart, man, am I faithful to Lord Jesus Christ today? Amen. Did I put him number one always? I mean, if you put your family, if you put anything else before Lord Jesus Christ, you're unfaithful. Amen. See, if you're faithful to the things of the world, things here on earth, instead of, you know, one up there, always, then you're unfaithful. And don't blame me, and don't blame someone around you for calling you unfaithful. Because according to the Word of God, you're being unfaithful to Lord Jesus Christ. Talk with Lord Jesus Christ and resolve it then, right? You have a great opportunity to get right with the Lord today. Many times, you are who you are because you don't put Lord Jesus Christ first. Many times, you're down because you don't put Lord Jesus Christ first. Many times, you don't have a good relationship with others because you don't put Lord Jesus Christ as first. It's time for you to be a faithful person. It's time for you to show that faithfulness. It's time for you to recognize how faithful Lord Jesus Christ is to you. Let's pray. Dear Father, all of us need to really check our heart and see how faithful we are to you. 
Lord, you died for us on the cross, shedding your precious blood, unconditional love. And you're faithful to us each day and every day. However, we tend to forget. And however, we take it for granted. And we put earthly things as our priority instead of you, Lord. Help us to be faithful to you, Lord, always. And if there are sins that's hindering us, help us to confess our sins and get right with you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we, pay for, we pray for those faithful men. We pray for you know, Pastor Cash Shrive, Pastor Mike Shrive, Pastor Meg Crane, and many others who's going through hard times right now, physically especially, Lord. Please heal them according to your will. Give them encouragement, Lord God, and give their spouses and family members strength as well to help our faithful men to endure and rise victorious from this trials, Lord God. I pray that you'll bless everyone here and let your grace and mercy be upon us. And Lord, come quickly. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>